Okay, in this episode, we are going to look at the worksheet, how it is prepared and why it is used. The worksheet is really just kind of, a, think of it as an Excel or a document um, that is used just during the end of period um, process. Um, company gets into the accounting period and they want to prepare financial statements. Before they can prepare financial statements, they have to do adjusting entries. Um, so the worksheet helps a company be able to prepare those financial statements um, at the time that they identify and um, figure out the effect of adjusting entries on the account balances. Um, the worksheet is really just kind of a multi-column form. Again, think of it as an Excel spreadsheet. It is used in the adjustment process when preparing financial statements. It is not a permanent accounting record. Just think of it as a worksheet used by the accounting department. It can be computerized, it can be done by hand, which today most people do it computerized through software, um, and is prepared through a five-step process. And again, this is optional. A company does not need to use a worksheet when doing the adjusting process and preparing end of statement, or end of period financial statements. Um, the worksheet looks something like this. Um, we will see here, there's really a set of five different columns. We have the trial balance, debit and credits, adjustments, debits, and credits, adjusted trial balance, debits, and credits, income statement, debits, and credits, balance sheet, debits, and credits. Um, the first step is to prepare the trial balance on the worksheet. And remember, the trial balance is just simply the list of accounts and their balances at the end of the accounting period. In the general ledger, these are the accounts the company uses. As of the end of the period, before any adjustments have been made, these are the balances in the accounts. Total debit balances equal total credit balances. Once the company identifies what adjustments need to be made, and I'm not going to go through all these individual adjustments, um, that is covered in the adjusting process discussions, um, but this company identified all these different adjustments that needed to be made. Using this adjustment information, they figure out what accounts are affected in the adjustment process. Here in A, the company is recording the amount of supplies used. The adjustment would be to decrease the supplies asset account with a credit and a debit to supplies expense. So here is the first adjusting entries impact on the accounts. Those are entered into the adjustment columns, showing whether the adjustment is a debit or credit to that account. Once we have all of these adjustments shown in the worksheet and the effect on the accounts, we can see down here that the total dollar amount of debit adjustments equal the total dollar amount of credit. Again, we're still in balance. After those adjustments are entered on the worksheet, the third step is to see the account balances after the adjustments have been posted. That is the adjusted trial balance. We take the trial balance amount, add or subtract any adjustments posted to it to get the ending adjusted balance for each account. Here we are seeing supplies had a debit balance of $2,500 before the adjustment was posted. A credit of $1,500 was adjusted into that account for the amount of supplies used. The balance is decreased $1,500 down to a balance of $1,000 after the adjustment impact is taken into account. And that's what we're seeing here is we're seeing all the account balances after these adjustments were posted to them. The worksheet then goes on to take these adjusted balances and extend them over to which set of columns coincide with the financial statement those account balances are reported on. Assets, cash, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, liabilities, notes payable, accounts payable, unearned service revenue, owner's capital. All of those end up on the balance sheet. Here we're seeing the revenues and expenses. Those are all reported on the income statement. Accumulated depreciation, interest payable, salaries and wages payable, also on the balance sheet. So these last two columns are simply just taking the trial balance amounts and putting them into the columns where they are appropriate. Once that is done, we can see the total debits that are reported on the income statement, which reflects the expenses, the total credits reflecting the revenues. The difference between the revenues and the expenses is obviously net income. 
Over here, we're seeing the total debits reported on the balance sheet, total credits reported on the balance sheet. These do not reflect the same, which, you know, the balance sheet is supposed to balance. But the difference between these two is really a function of the net income. Because right now, all of the net income is currently recorded in the um, income statement accounts. Okay, so we're going to see the amount of net income in the income statement debit column and the balance sheet credit column. Now with this worksheet complete, it makes it very easy for us to prepare financial statements. Using the information out of the income statement columns, we are able to easily prepare the income statement. Going back to those worksheet columns, we then take the amount out of the balance sheet column to prepare our owner's equity statement. Beginning owner's capital plus owner investments plus net income less any owner drawings to get to the ending owner's capital. Then we are able to use the final column to prepare our balance sheet. Okay. So the process is really the same. The only difference is the worksheet gives us a visual of preparing the financial statements and posting the adjusting entries to them.